Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to get back into the Word again tonight and avail ourselves to the mind renewal process. Because even though we come to Jesus, our spirits are born again, but our mind needs to be renewed. Amen. Amen. With the Word of God. And so we're uh, going to go back to the Word again tonight. Amen. In uh, 1 John, Gospel, or 1 John rather, not the Gospel of John, but 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to uh, look at a series that we started several weeks ago, but going back to it. On learning to discern. Learning to discern. Amen. How many of you know the Lord wants us to discern? And keep us free from deception. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, 1 John 4, do you have it? Alright, you guys are you guys are quick. Amen. You guys are sharp. You guys are intelligent. Amen. You guys are free from deception. Father, we pray over the word again tonight. We release faith, Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you that the Spirit of God has given us because of the blood of Jesus through faith in His blood. Ears that would hear. Eyes that would see. And a heart that would perceive and understand the incorruptible seed of the Word of the living God that's going forth today. And Lord, I pray over this Word that those that hear it and those that would even hear it over the Internet, God, however they hear this Word, that the anointing would destroy every yoke of bondage. And Lord, let them hope again. Let them dream again. Let them have faith in God again. Let them look forward to getting up tomorrow again. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank You, Lord, that this Word shall prosper the, to the people that you sent it to and bless their lives and make them a mighty blessing and be glorified in all of it, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now, uh, I'm reading from the Amplified 1 John chapter 4. We're talking to you, we said, about a, a series we did several weeks ago, but it was called, it was entitled Learn to Discern. Learn to Discern. And... Uh, 1 John chapter 4 says, Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, and that word prove there, you can see in the, uh, in the text of the Hebrew, means test the spirits. And so sometimes we think, uh, you know, you go on a job or something like that, and you have a difficult time getting along with somebody, and you think, man, this person's just not that nice, but... Uh, Really, the Word of God tells Christians that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. It's, uh, you, you know, they, they even do personality tests and personality profiles. They say, well, this person's type A personality, this person's not, so they don't, they don't mesh. But, uh, you know, there are cases that we're dealing with spirits. Spirits. And you'll see uh, in the early church that uh, although... The Lord was doing great and mighty things and adding to the church that at the same time the, the enemy was trying to, to uh, create issues or problems for them. And they, they understood through prayer that God gave them discernment to realize how to deal with those spirits that were, that were coming against the ministry. And so John, by the Spirit of God, said to, uh, to Christians everywhere, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. Because you remember the Lord Jesus told the Pharisees, the religious leaders of his day, in John chapter 8, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Now he told the religious leaders that. And he said that by discerning of spirits. Not, not the way they looked. They were very impressive looking. The very nice clothing, uh, religious robes. and uh, but, but the Lord said to them, Ye are of your father the devil, lust of your father you will do. He was a... Uh, a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. And so really there's only two families on the face of the entire. You say, no, Pastor, it's not right. I've been on Ancestry.com and I found out about my father, my grandfather, great-grandfather. And I'm not talking about your natural family or your the lineage of your last name. I'm talking about two spiritual families. Two spiritual families. So you're either of the family of God or the family of the devil. 
Well, somebody said that. I don't believe that's politically correct, but it is biblically correct. Amen. I said it is biblically correct. And so, uh, uh, you know, the Spirit of God is working to accomplish His purposes, to establish His covenant in the earth, and the spirit of the enemy is doing uh, His best to deceive and to trick people. Amen. And to, uh, and to uh, keep them in confusion. Because anytime there's manifestation of confusion, uh, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And so even in an atmosphere where there's, there's some confusion, you, you say, now wait a minute, I'm testing or trying these spirits. That's not of my Father. Confusion's not of my God. And so I take authority over confusion in the name of Jesus. And I believe in to receive direction from the Holy Spirit. And there'll be no confusion, but there'll be uh, direct uh, instruction from the Word and from the Spirit of God. He said, as you test these spirits, because he said, why do you test these spirits, whether or not they're from God? Because many false prophets have gone forth into the world. And by this you may know, perceive, and recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact. Now notice that. Notice the Bible said it's a fact. It's not just a, a, a story. But what is the fact? That Jesus Christ, the Messiah, actually has become man and has come in the flesh, is of God, has God for its source. So Jesus is the Son of Man and the Son of God. Hallelujah. He was, he was made 100% man, but also 100% God. And our sin separated us from a holy God. And only through the blood of Jesus could we, we be reconciled back to the Father God. But, he told Christians, now don't be naive in this area that every, every spirit you come across is not of God. Amen. I said, Amen. And uh, some, are more, some are more obvious than others. <laughs> because any spirit that directly contradicts God's Word or is in opposition to the Word of God, no matter how they try to, uh, you know, articulate that position, is, is not of God. It's, it's an antichrist spirit. And uh, so in verse 2, as we're reading, he said, he said every ex again, you'll know that by this, this, and recognize the Spirit of God, Every spirit which acknowledges, confesses the fact that Jesus has, has become man and come in the flesh is of God, has God as a source. And every spirit which does not acknowledge and confess. Somebody say acknowledge. Acknowledge. And confess. And confess. Because some people say, well, I believe Jesus was the Son of God. And you say, well, do you confess Him as your Lord and Savior? They say, no, absolutely not. You say, now, wait a minute. That's not of God. If you believe He is the Son of God and you believe He died on the cross for your sins, then you have to make a choice or a decision to acknowledge and confess Him. And that would be the working of the Holy Spirit. And the working of the Antichrist Spirit would try to keep you from that acknowledgement and confession. Amen? Amen. Oh, but the devil's too late. We already, we've already acknowledged and confessed Jesus is Lord. Can you say Amen. amen. So he said, every spirit which does not acknowledge, confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but would annul, destroy, sever, disunite him, is not of God, does not proceed from him. This is non-confession. Non-confession. And you'll see this, uh, you know, in some of our television programs and some of, uh, uh, you know, some things in popular culture that, that denies Christ. Amen. 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 As the Son of God. Uh, but uh, you understand that, that the Word of God told us to, uh, to discern and not to, and not to uh, swallow everything. Amen? Amen? Then the Word said in verse 4, John, uh, 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God. In other words, like one preacher said, if you've come to faith in Christ, you've been refathered by God. Huh? That you've been born again as... The word says in John chapter 3, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. And as far as the east is from the west, He will remove your transgression and sin from you. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. And the only one that would try to bring that up is the accuser of the brethren, the devil. Amen? Praise God. 
Now we're going to look some more at this word discern in Matthew chapter 16, please. Are y'all doing all right? You still strong in the Lord and the power of His might? Just because we're not singing right now, we're still strong in Christ. And getting stronger every day. I say getting stronger every day. Getting a 100% faith food diet right here. Uh, do you have Matthew 16? You have that? Man, you guys are sharp. You guys are quick. You guys are intelligent. You guys are growing in the things of God. So the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting him. Now tempting, as we read in uh, 1 John chapter 4, when you're testing or discerning spirits, uh, Satan is always referred to in the Bible as, or not always, but several times is referred to as the tempter, when the tempter came. And so he'll come, and, but he'll always uh, tempt you in the flesh, in the things of the flesh. He'll not tempt you in anything in the spirit. And uh, Brother Jesse DePlante said, well, I could prove that out because uh, he said, I can tell you that tithing is 100% spiritual. He said, I can prove that because he said, all the years of walking with the Lord and serving God, he said, the devil has never once, never one time, tempted me to tithe. <laughs> so he said, tithe. I have no feeling to it. It's 100% faith. It's 100% spiritual. And the devil only tempts you into things of the flesh. Or the appetites of the flesh. But. Uh, so the Pharisees and Sadducees operating this spirit. They come to tempt Jesus. Desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. So they said. If you would do a sign for us. And prove that you are Christ. Then we, you know, we, we might believe in you. But in verse 2. Uh, he, he, how, how many of you know that the Bible says that uh, there was over 500 that physically saw Jesus raised from the dead and ascend into heaven? And, then the, and, and as they're watching them go up into heaven, the angels beside them explaining it to the crowd, the Bible says some of them doubt. They're standing there watching him ascend into heaven and some of them down. And here's the Pharisee saying, now, now show us a sign and we'll believe. But see, their hearts, their hearts are not right with God because they're, they're, they're not believing His Word, but they're, they're tempting Him saying, show us, show us a sign. But he, this, is, this was His response. I want you to notice this because it's important. He answered and said to them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather. Now this is before Doppler radar. There's no weather channel. There's a, you know, the, the only thing they're doing is look, looking up in the sky to figure out how things are going to be. But he's given them, listen, a lesson on natural discernment versus spiritual discernment. I'll say that again. Jesus has given a lesson as he is again tonight over natural discernment over spiritual discernment. And so what does that mean? That simply means this uh, 1 Samuel 16 principle that people look on your outside appearance mm -hmm. and that's how they judge you. Amen. But the Bible said God always looks at the heart. God always looks at the heart of a person. And so so many people are so quick to judge based on what they see on the outside. But the Lord's always looking at the heart. Amen? So here's a major difference between natural discernment and spiritual discernment. And, and the Lord said of, of these leaders that, that you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. So they didn't pray. They didn't say, Lord, what's the weather going to be? Father, show me. They, they just looked up and said, you know, the sky is red, so I think, I think it's going to be a nice day. Now, now somebody said, now why, why did he say, why did he say in the evening? Because in the book of beginnings, in the book of Genesis, actually in the Hebrew calendar, it's from evening to morning. Like you would think of a regular calendar, morning to evening. 
But from the time of creation, it was evening and morning was the first day. And so in the evening, you know, they're saying, well, it looks red. I think, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice day coming up. And notice in verse 3, and in the morning, it will be uh, foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites. Hypocrites. And that's strong. It's saying you're, you're saying one thing, but your, your heart is really somewhere else. Your, your words and your heart aren't matching up. <laughs> In other words, your, your actions are not matching your words. And so, what, what was hypocritical? You can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. If this world knew how imminent and close the return of our Lord Jesus was a reality, you, you couldn't have enough chairs in this church. And you think it's crowded at Outback to get a stake. You let people discern and know the signs of the times. They, they'd be serving God in prayer and they, they just say, Lord, what can I do for you? Hallelujah. We, we don't have time to waste. We don't have another 10 or 20 years. Of, well, we got to get my... It's, it's today is the day of salvation. Today is the time to serve Him with all our hearts. Not, not wait till next year to serve Him. Come on, preacher, preach. Okay, I think I will. Praise God. And so he said, this is the problem. You, you're going 100% by natural discernment. God forbid that the church of Jesus ever uh, uh, substitutes brass for gold by moving totally into natural discernment. Amen. But may we be discerning of the signs of the times. Jesus went on to say in verse 4, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. I want you to notice, they're not seeking after the sign giver. They're seeking after a sign. See, Solomon never sought the gold. Solomon never sought the wealth. He sought God. So he said, "There's no, there shall be no sign." Somebody said, "No sign." Given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So the story of Jonah, the Sunday school uh, story of Jonah, the big fish that swallowed Jonah as he ran away from the call of God. God said, "Go to Nineveh," and he's going the opposite way to Tarshish. Amen. As the sign of, of God's bringing him back to the call of God, this big fish swallows him up. He's in the heart of the fish three days, three nights, even as the Son of Man was in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. I get ready to preach. And on the third day, God raised, death could not hold him, the grave could not hold him. Every other founder of every other religion on this planet is dead and buried in a grave somewhere on this planet earth. But our Lord Jesus Christ is raised from the dead and seated at the right hand of the majesty on high where He ever lives to make intercession. Pray for us that our faith will not fail. And the mighty Holy Spirit came to give us discernment that we would not be tricked, that we would not be deceived, that we wouldn't start off in the Spirit and end up in the flesh. Come on now. Even as uh, I could give this illustration many times, I was uh, driving on a long highway trip, and you know, you driving several hours, it's dark outside, you, you get a little drowsy, a little sleep, start nodding off a little bit. And, and somebody thought on the, on the highway to put those safety divots mm -hmm. on the road, and so I'm, I'm just starting to get a little sleepy, and next, you know, I'm drifting a little bit to the uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? But drifting, the Bible said, let's not drift away from the faith. And so as soon as I'm drifting I'm off into, you know, the ditches over here, and, and, and the Holy Spirit will do that. He'll let you know, hey, you're, you're getting way off 
course. You're getting way off track. I've not called you here. I've called you over here. And so you're getting off course. And that is a major part of discernment. Am I walking with Him or am I not? And if I'm not, Lord have mercy on me and help me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to get back on track to where I should have been. And forgive me, Lord, for getting off track. But help me, Father, to get back on track. And He is. He's answering that prayer. So Jesus said that, that there's no sign given to this wicked, adulterous generation but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Now look, please, at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This, this is going to bless you. You're going to say, man, I'm so glad I went to Wednesday night church. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And it is relevant to the church here in Virginia Beach in 2017. But he said this in his letters. He, he, he tells the church, I, brethren, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, please. I, brethren, uh, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. Now, Paul's a highly educated man. He had what we would consider uh, in today's... Uh, educational system a, a doctor's degree he was a doctor of the law he, he knew that he was a Pharisee he, you had to be a doctor so he's highly educated but he said when I came preaching Christ it wasn't my great speech or my wisdom declaring the testimony of God I determined not to know anything among you in other words he's saying don't don't tell me all the gossip going on at the church only thing I want to know about Jesus Christ and him crucified because if we get off of that, we're going to get off track. <laughs> the next thing you know, uh, you know, we're going to become a social club. Amen. Amen. Come on now. And so, so he said, we got to stay with the gospel. we got to stay with Jesus. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with the, oh man, I get excited. With enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now, Brother Hagin said this to us many times. He said, many of my children, many Christians, he was saying, the Lord said to him, that they, they uh, are, are looking for the spectacular, but they're missing the supernatural. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, the supernatural lives in you every day. As soon as you get off track, you've got the Holy Ghost in he let you know, hey, you, you're getting out of line. You, you need to get back in the love of God. You need to get back in fellowship. You need to, the Holy Ghost, that's supernatural. And He's living with us and living in us. Praise God. And so we're still talking to you about discernment. That your faith, why did He say this? Your faith would not should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The power of God. Somebody say the power of God. Now, I want you to notice this, please, in, in verse 9. And, but as it's written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. If people, and they are, I'm saying this by faith, discern the reward for serving God. You see, Hollywood thinks they do it up big. They say, we got this red carpet, you know, people wearing these gowns and exquisite clothing, you know, et cetera. You know, we got these awards. And all, but, if, but if they knew the reward of serving God, they discerned it, the reality of it. They say, I don't, I don't need any of that stuff. I need, I need to be serving the Lord. So, so natural eye has not seen. Natural ear has not heard. And, and even some people you talk to about spiritual things, they, they think it's foolish. They think it's silly. Those that don't believe the gospel. But I want you to see this in verse 10. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. If He didn't, you wouldn't be in church on a Wednesday night. Is that right? Be out walking the dog, walking the cat, whatever, you know, whatever people do. You say, no, sir. Good, pretty nice, pretty nice day out today. Uh, you know, but until your spirit came alive 
and your spirit said, I am hungry. Feed me because I need, I need the word. I need to feed on the word to, to, uh, to strengthen my faith. Because I can sense this world trying to pull me back into the flesh. I can, I can, I can feel, I can sense that. You know, somebody said to have a, if you want a weed garden, then, then do nothing. And it's pretty much the same in Christianity. If, to backslide, you, you just wake up in the morning and don't, don't read your Bible. If, if you're not staying in the Word and staying in fellowship with God and the Holy Spirit and other uh, Christians of like precious faith, people start to backslide. They start to drift. It's like a weed garden. You, you don't tend to your garden, they pop up. Come on now. Weed of jealousy. Weed of unforgiveness. Weed of uh, envy, you know. Here's where they come from. That's right. Pull it up by the roots. So God has revealed them. What does He reveal to us? The things which God has prepared for them that love Him. By His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things. Like I said before in a bare repetition, Google has nothing on the Spirit of God. Oh, I brought that back at 1.234 seconds and here's the top 15,000 results. That ain't got nothing on the Holy Ghost. They think they know some stuff. And people are impressed. Like, this is impressive. Now I can say it with my voice angry. Uh, Google search for this. But why don't they say, Father? You know, even if you need to find your keys. Lord, you know all things. Where are those keys at? <laughs> Show me. You, you, you know more than GPS or satellite system. Father, before they were even invented, you are God. You will always be God. So Holy Spirit, show me where those things are at. Amen? You know, that's how, that's how one of the ways that Saul became king. He, he was on a hunt for, for some lost stuff, some things that, that were lost. But uh, the Word says that the Spirit of God he searches all things. He, he searches. You, you don't even see them. You don't even perceive them. A lot of times. You just. You know, strong in the Lord. The power of His mind. The Holy Ghost searches. Searching. 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 Praise God. Yeah. All things. Even the things. The, you know. For the deep sheet. The deep things of God. Amen. The deep things of God. <laughs> But what, what man, that's a preacher joke. But what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man. Show us a sign. Show us a sign. Well, even if he did, they, they wouldn't recognize it. If they don't recognize the word right in front of their face, <coughs> doing miracles every day. Well, show us a sign. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. The world has a spirit to it. And this is why, you know, as I'm in Subway getting my sub, uh, the, that ABC store has got so much action. Pe people are trying to, trying to medicate. They're trying to self-medicate or drown their sorrow or they're, they're dealing with their pain. Because this world, the world is hopeless. It's got a hopeless spirit about it. It's got a spirit to it. Are you all here? And then, and then they say, okay, now government, solve this problem of the spirit of the world. What? I mean, they, they, they do the best they can do, but only the Lord can meet that, fill that void that's in the heart of every human being that wants to be loved, genuinely loved. <coughs> only Jesus can fill that void in people's heart. So we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Somebody say, of God. Uh -huh. And remember 1 John 4, he said, you test the spirit, you try the spirits to see whether or not they're of God or not. And those are the ones you receive. You don't receive the spirit that's not of God. Right? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now we're, we're, we're closing up here. Which things also we speak. Paul said that we speak them. The Paul spoke them. The apostles spoke them. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. So academia is to, is to build up your intellect or your natural mind. 
But Paul said, we're not dealing with your natural mind. Now we're, now we're dealing with the spirit of man. So it's not uh, man's wisdom that is teaching you these things, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Did you know the Holy Ghost is a teacher? Did you know he's the master teacher? Did you know he can teach you how to pray? Amen. You don't say, I don't know how to pray. And the Holy Ghost said, I'll show you. I'll teach you. I'll, I'll take you right to the scriptures that say, pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. John 14 and John 16. I'll show you how to pray. I'll show you how to walk in love. I'll teach you. Amen. Praise God. How many of you know tonight his ways are higher? His thoughts are higher. Teach us, Holy Spirit. We've got a lot to learn. And he is teaching us. And what does he do? He compares. What did Jesus do? He said, comparing spiritual with spiritual. Jesus, like he, he, gave, he gave truths in parables. In parables. That's how he taught. But the natural man said all that, say verse 14, the natural man, somebody say natural man. natural man. That's the unregenerate, not born again human being. The natural man, what? Receiveth not the things of the Spirit. Is that right? Isn't that what it says? For they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're what? Spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. In other words, we must be born again to even begin to discern by the Spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to close with saying this, that some Christians have said, uh, they've said, you know, I, I have the gift of discernment. And really, in, in, the, in the Word of God, the Bible doesn't say it's a gift of discernment. It calls it discerning of spirits. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so really, uh, a lot of people said, I've got gift of discernment, are just suspicious. <laughs> They're suspicious. But see, there is a true gift of discerning of spirits. Or actually, God, in the Old Testament, prophet was called the seer. He, he actually saw into the spirit realm. Amen. I said amen. amen. The Holy Ghost sees into the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's already seen the plots and the schemes and devices of the enemy. And he said, I've made a way where there seems to be no way for you to come out of it without even the smell of smoke on your clothes and the fire where the enemy wanted to destroy your life. The Holy Ghost said, I've already seen that. I've already made a way to come out of it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise the Lord right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, I, I know the truth. His name is Jesus Christ. And that truth has made me free. Free from deception. Grounded in the Word of God. And taught by the Holy Spirit. To walk in the truth. And to stay free. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 I pray you got something out of that. I pray your Holy Ghost balloon got blown back up. And you're strong in the Lord. Power of His might. Amen. Have a wonderful week.